Hello everybody, Sandy Trefker here, Graphic45 Brand Ambassador. I want to welcome you to my tutorial video. I am going to show you how to use three of the large Graphic45 policy envelopes to create a very popular project known as a stuffed envelope. These are wonderfully fun to give away and I'm going to show you how to create a very sturdy one using these policy envelopes. I have already made one of these stuffed envelopes and I will be making a second one in this video so that you can follow along and create one for yourself. I will be using the beautiful 12 by 12 floral shop, a new paper collection from Graphic 45. And I will show you how to create this so that it actually stands. This one stands. It has a folding easel type stand on the center. It has uh, tags in the pockets on the back and the front. And you see it stands up. It's hard to show in the video, but it does stand on its own. Uh, I created different elements that I will show you later how to, how to create, like the straw to match the papers. And you're going to need certain tools. You're going to want your trimmer, a scoreboard, a one inch circle punch, bone folder. I like to use distress markers to mark uh, color the edges of the cut papers. You might want to use uh, distress inks. I'm going to use a regular size black Graphic 45 tag and I'll also be adding in later on one of their large tags. I've already made a couple of paper clips for this project using 49 and Market Flowers and a large office paper clip. You just glue the flower to it and then glue a circle onto the back. I'll be using Hug Snug Seam Binding Ribbon and this is the moss green but I will also be using a pink color and we'll be using adding in this really pretty lightweight lace and I like to use my art glitter designer glue that dries clear it's really great for paper projects you'll also want to pre make out of cardstock about three or four I have three here I think that's probably plenty uh, strips that are one inch wide by 12 inches long out of cardstock and then you will score down the middle on the one inch end so that you have three long hinges that you're going to cut to fit for the pockets. You'll also want a package of the large Graphic 45 black policy envelopes. If that's the color you choose to use, you can use whatever you would like. I'm going to select for this next one, one of the dotted ones and two of the letters. I think that's the same thing that I used in the first one. I'm also going to use the Floral Shop uh, ephemera journaling and ephemera cards package, the chipboard pack, and the tags and pockets that come with the collection that you can purchase separately for the collection. In your 12 by 12 paper pack there is also a 12 by 12 sticker sheet. We'll, I'll use a bit of stickers and also some 4 inch doilies. I'm going to use a couple of those on the project. So let's get started. First we're going to take one of the large policy envelopes and we're going to put it in our trimmer so that the top edge is on the three inch mark and we're going to trim off three inches from the top of just one of the policy envelopes. You see it's open on the one end and still sealed on the other. Set the piece you just cut off aside and then take your second policy envelope and you're going to cut off from the bottom. I'm going to put it in at six inches from the bottom edge and trim away just a bit of that flap. So if you put it at right at six, it will make it come out just right on that edge to give it a straight edge there. So it's open on that end. Now I will be pulling this off. I decided to do it later to, just to make sure that I didn't change my mind, but it will have will be taken off because you're going to mat this with paper. So we have these two. These are going to make the pockets on the front side of our policy uh, stuffed envelope. These are policy envelopes. We're changing them into a stuffed envelope and we're going to use the hinges. So this is the main piece. The larger one that we have that with the top cut off is our main piece and this will be a pocket that we're going to add to that. You will need to take the top piece that you cut off the first envelope. This would be the three inch piece that you cut off and you're going to open up this flap 
and put it in your trimmer. We're going to cut off just the flap. So I'm just putting the edge of this piece right along my cut line so that it'll be straight and cutting away that tab piece. This will make another little pocket on the front of our stuffed envelope. So I need to go ahead and pull the circle closure piece off. You don't need that on there as we're going to mat these, this with pattern paper. So take that off and you see that it's open all the way through so I want you to take glue and just put a thin line of glue along one edge. Uh, it would be the bottom edge because this is directional paper even though most of it won't be showing. But go ahead and seal that up with the glue. Wipe off any excess. I always use a dry wipe to uh, wipe glue off. And so this is going to attach onto the other pocket that's going to be on the front of our envelope. So we're going to take our one inch strips that have been scored down the middle. These are hinges. And you just, I'm going to use my scissors and just cut it to fit. So I'm going to need three for this little pocket. Two on the side and one for the bottom. What this does is make actually an extra pocket and it gives it a little space so that you can put a little thicker things inside like maybe you want to put uh, some bags of tea like um, fancy teas or hot chocolate packets or something like that inside this little stuffed envelope that you're making as a gift. And these would be wonderful Mother's Day gifts or birthday gifts so uh, keep that in mind as you're creating and using the lovely Graphic 45 papers. This floral shop is just beautiful if you love flowers, but there's other wonderful Graphic 45 collections that would work fabulous with this project. Take your longest little hinge and apply glue to just one side of the back of it and take your pocket and on the back side that, uh, that you want to be your back, attach the long hinge to the bottom edge, the edge that you glued together, and just attach the one side of the hinge right along the fold line, the fold line of the hinge right along the edge, bottom edge of the pocket. And then do the same thing and attach the two side ones with glue and just make sure that you get them on straight and right along the cut edge or the folded edge of the pocket so you want the edges to, to match up. You don't want your hinge extending over your pocket piece. Take your scissors and miter cut the bottom corners on just the hinges on the black cardstock so that you have these angle cuts so that when it's folded over it will lay down flatter. So I'm just doing an angle cut on each hinge on the bottom edge only. As you see when you fold it up that gives you an angle cut and if you need to just trim a little bit more. If you don't want a lot of thickness there you want it to lay down nice and flat. and take the shortest of the other two policy envelopes that we pre-cut and take glue and apply it to the backs of the hinges. Your hinges will be folded to the back of the little pocket and then you apply glue to all three and then carefully place it down onto the other piece lining up the sides and the bottom. Use your bone folder to burnish the sides, all the edges to make sure they stick down and then inside uh, to make sure that the glue hasn't oozed out and it doesn't stick and close the pocket up so you want to stay open. Turn the piece over and on the back side apply hinge, hinges just the same as you did for the little pocket. 
you have two long ones on the side and then you want one across just the bottom. I have the two pocket pieces assembled with the hinges attached to the back so I'm ready to take that one long piece uh, policy envelope where we cut the flap off and I'm going to glue this pocket assembly down onto it so I'm putting the glue on the backs of the hinges where they're folded in towards the pocket so you have two on each side and one across the bottom so just apply glue and then again carefully glue it to the bottom of your pocket. Now I'm off screens a little bit so that I can see it closer to myself. I'm going to scoot it up a little bit but you want to make sure you line it up along the bottom edge and on the sides and then hold it and press it down so that those hinges attach. And I'm going to go ahead and put some little clips on it to just give it some extra holding time. The uh, art glitter designer glue dries really quick but sometimes you do need to like give it some help by holding things down so I'm going to uh, use these clips to hold it. Okay so I let it dry for a few minutes and then I'm taking the clips off so we have the front pockets attached to our stuffed envelope and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and remove that round closure piece off of the back so just gently pull that off and then make sure your pockets are still open I'm just kind of sticking my fingers down in there to make sure they're open. And now we're ready to attach the other policy envelope, which I'm using the black dot for the back side. So we need to cut this down for our back side. Now this pocket is just kind of like an extra pocket because once it's standing, it kind of has a funny way of not being straight up and down, but at an angle, but it still works for little short tags. So you're going to cut four inches off the top of this third policy envelope. So just line that up in there so that you're taking off four inches from the top. Save that piece because we're going to use that, the one that has the closure. So now we have this piece left that we're ready to attach to our book. But before we do that, we need to create our stand, our folding stand easel type assembly piece. So we're going to do that next. So you see it in there, it's just a small piece that folds up. So first I'm going to take this piece that we just cut and on the top edge to help it where it folds in and out, it's got to have some support. So I'm taking another one of the one inch hinges that are an extra piece that's left over and I'm cutting with my scissors so that it fits across the top. You're only going to need one of those and now take the four inch piece that you cut off the policy envelope and I want you to cut just one inch from the bottom, not the flap side but just the bottom. So I'm lining it up at the one inch mark I'm going to cut that off and I still have my closure pieces I'm going to set that aside because I am going to use that in the book or in the envelope so it's going to make a little uh, envelope booklet and I'm going to go ahead right now so don't forget and I'm just going to take glue and seal this up right here on the bottom edge. I'm going to seal that up to make it a really short policy envelope and I'm going to go ahead and color the cut edge of the envelope my distress marker and then when you fasten it up you've got a little policy envelope to tuck in one of the pockets. We'll set that side for later. Now let's take our back pocket piece and let's glue this hinge again the same as we've done before. Just take, put glue on one side of the hinge so that's just a half inch section there and glue this to the open end along the cut line. You want the fold of the hinge to go up against the cut line. So I'm just burnishing it and I'm going to make sure I get all the glue wiped off and make sure that it doesn't seal it up. You want to make sure that stays where it opens. So I'm going to let it dry. And while it's drying I'm going to take this one inch section that we cut and I'm going to put glue on the inside 
so that I can glue the entire piece together to make it a double thickness. Since this is going to be our easel hinge piece, I want it to be extra strong. I'm glue. Uh, sorry, I am coloring the cut edges with my distress marker. So to create this easel stand, I'm going to take this one inch piece that I've glued together and I'm going to just fold it in half, making the ends meet so that it meets exactly in the middle. You have to work with it because it's double thickness, but you can just fold it both directions and get it to start folding in for you. You could use your scoreboard. Sometimes I just kind of skip a step and just go ahead and fold something and then I burnish it really well. And then in the opposite direction you're going to fold at about a half inch on each end. See where I'm folding back on itself? So now I have the mountain on each end fold and a valley fold. Now we're going to take this pocket piece that's going to fit right there on the back side of our larger policy envelope and apply glue to just one half inch section and you're going to glue that to the bottom. Mine is probably about a oh, sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch from the cut the bottom edge of the policy envelope. So you want it so that it sticks down so that the center fold one is going up towards the top. So it looks like that. And now we're going to carefully glue this to the back. So we want glue on the little half inch tab at the bottom. I'm just lining it up to make sure it lines up okay and then I want glue in the top half inch hinge. So I'm clipping this down to hold it while I glue the top part. So if you see I'm putting glue just on the half inch piece of the hinge and with it holding on the bottom with a clip I'm going to press that down and reach in there with my bone folder so that I can make sure I burnish it down. And you want to, if I didn't, uh, haven't done it, I want you to be sure and check, like right here, make sure your pocket stays open. You don't want the glue that shut. So take your bone folder or your fingers and make sure that it stays open. I decided mine wasn't quite stri uh, straight, so I realigned it and now I'm adding the clips to hold it down. Once the glue has dried, you can open it up and you see you have the easel stand and your stuffed envelope will stand up on its own. And you have your pockets on the front and a bonus pocket on the back. Be a good place maybe to uh, stick a note or something, maybe an envelope with a gift card. Now we're ready to add the pattern paper. So I chose this print from the floor shop with the pretty pink flowers and I'm going to pattern all three sections the same and I'm measuring to see where I want my paper. You might want to measure your own to allowing how much of the policy envelope you want to show. I want mine covered for like pretty much from edge to edge uh, so I measured and I'm cutting mine at three inches three and fifteen sixteenths of an inch just just a sixteenth inch sixteenth of an inch under four inches wide policy envelopes are four inches wide so I'm cutting that down and making one long cut and then I'm going to measure and cut each of my for the policy pockets the pockets of the envelopes for the height so I didn't take notes on that but I can measure mine real quick the bottom one looks like it is cut at two and five eighths and the second center one is probably cut at, because you want it to slip down in it, probably at four inches, maybe three three quarters of an inch. And the very top part is cut at, I would say about three and three and a one fourth, three, three and a quarter. So that's what I cut those. Now I'm laying these out. I have inked the edges and now I'm going to just take glue and attach glue to each piece and make sure that they slip down inside of the 
underneath the pocket. Now you're not putting them inside of the extra pockets that we have, so you have to look at this real carefully. You make sure that you're gluing it to the main piece, the main policy envelope, and not covering up any openings of your other pockets. Make sure you always burnish really well uh, your pattern paper as you're gluing it down so that you don't have any wrinkles. I like to use the flat side of my bone folder and then also use it to check to make sure that I haven't glued any of the open areas, the p open pocket areas, I haven't glued them shut. So I'm gluing now the last piece on the front. Once you've made one of these, these are really quick to put together and a lot of fun and I really love decorating them, so we're going to do that later. I'm going to show you where I, how I put the flowers and glue them on and different things like that. And also we'll make tags and decorate those. So we'll just burnish it, make sure that it lays down flat and if there's any excess glue, wipe that off and make sure your pocket is still open. double checking, make sure I can get my fingers down in there. So now I'm taking my ruler and I'm just going to measure from side to side and like I said these are four inch wide envelopes so I'm just going to put a mark at the two inch mark on each pocket sec section just right at the top because I'm going to be punching some th uh, thumb openings so that you can see that these are actually pockets. So I'm just marking each one putting like a dot or a short line where the punch will be centered on all three of these. Then I'm going to take my one inch circle punch and I'm just going to center the, the mark that I made and I'm going to double check and make sure that I'm just punching through the front part of the pocket. So I've opened this one up, kind of squeeze it a little bit to open it up and line up my circle punch. Put that mark in the center and I just eyeball it and I punch out that one thumb notch like that. And you'll see that the policy envelopes are finished on the inside and you can leave them that way but I am going to use scraps of paper because I want it to be pink on the inside so I am going to pattern mine but you don't have to unless you just want to. So again make sure you have the pocket open so that you have just the front. I'm double checking to make sure just the front edge of the pocket and line it up and punch it about the same depth as the first one. And I need to do it again on the bottom one. So again open it up so that you just got the front portion of your pocket so actually what you have is two layers, two different pockets in there. You have the pocket that you created with the hinges and then the pocket that just naturally was created with the policy envelopes. Okay, so there's those three and like I said you could just leave them like that. They're already finished but I'm going to add uh, the opposite side of this paper that I just used. I'm going to use the pink inside there and you only need a little bit enough to cover that. You don't have to cover the whole inside of your pocket. So I'm cutting this uh, scrap piece in half and it's pretty much already cut the, the correct width and I'm going to just ink the top edge so that I can glue these down inside of my pockets. So I'm making my thumb notches pink but you could certainly leave them the color of the policy envelopes if you chose to do that. So carefully open up your pockets and glue these into the inside. I apologize for being off camera. 
I really had to bring it up close to me so that I could see and make sure I was getting them in straight. You want to uh, not to extend past the top of your pocket, so you've got to make sure they're going in straight and then glue it down and burnish it. So there's the first one and I'm going to do the second one and then I will need to cut another little scrap of paper or another piece of paper for the very bottom one. In the end with all the flowers decorating and the tags and things you really don't see these very much so this you know it's why it's very optional for you to add this extra piece of paper in there but I went ahead and did it just in case because you never know when something's going to show so you want to make sure it's finished from all the way down and not leave anything unfinished in case later on you needed it to be finished. So I do need to cut another piece of paper. I didn't have any scraps that I could use for this last little thumb notch. So I'm grabbing what's left of my piece of paper that I used, which was one sheet of paper, and I'm just cutting that down to about, oh, an inch and a half or so. And I'm trimming it down to the size that it needs to be. And then I'm going to see, make sure it slides in. And then ink the top edge. And then again, carefully glue this one down inside. And after this, our front side of our pocket will be patterned. And I think we'll go ahead and turn it over and pattern the back side before we start doing any decorating. And again, make sure you use that bone folder to get inside there and burnish to make sure that there's no glue. I use a Teflon bone folder that really helps uh, glue and stuff that sticks to it wipes off easily. So yes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the back side. And again, the same size width, which was 3 and 15 sixteenths of an inch. And I'm just deciding, do I want to go ahead and go with the green or with the pink? And I think I'm just going to continue what I did on the front and use that pretty green with the pink flowers and use the pink as accents and maybe some other greens as an accent color. So I'm just measuring that to make sure that the cut's going to work for me on this pocket. I might need to trim it down just a little bit. Let me measure again and make sure with that pocket added on there, you might need to measure that and then I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. I measured the length of the pocket, the height on the outside one on mine, I cut it to four and seven eighths, and the piece, the, the other long piece, I cut that down to about five inches. So that should work plenty. You might need to measure to make sure yours is, is correct for yours. And then again, ink the edges, and then we're going to glue that in. And if you're using the Art Glitter Glue, it's a real thin, uh, not a thick bodied glue, but you don't need a lot of it on your paper. And so you can purchase separately the uh, little metal tips that you can use on your tip of your glue gun, which will help control how much glue is coming out. So I've trimmed down the one that I needed for the front pocket on the back side. I call it the front pocket. It's just the pocket on the back side. And again, I'm going to ink all the edges before gluing it down. I have found that using the Distress ink pen works really great to just get the ink on the cut part of the paper if you're not wanting a lot of uh, Distress ink on your paper. It's a personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that one down also. Now I did not finish any of the uh, areas between the pockets uh, between the stuffed envelopes where the hinge part is, I'm going to leave those the color of the policy envelopes. I don't see any need of cutting paper and trying to fit that in. That would be something you might want to do prior to assembling. So I think everything looks fine without the in-between sections being 
patterned, so that's why I'm not doing mine. I'm just going to leave it the, the color that the policy envelopes were. So again, also the same as on the other. I'm double checking to make sure that nothing is stuck in there, and I'm taking my circle punch, my one inch circle punch, and punching that thumb knot. I did not measure the halfway point on this one. I just eyeballed it. It's the only one on this side, so I don't think that was an issue. And then again, I have a scrap of the pink paper. I'm going to glue that down inside of mine. And I need to ink the top edge only. You don't have to do the whole thing because it doesn't all show. And apply my glue on the edges and some in the middle. And stick it in there and burnish it down. Okay, so to finish the one on the back, I decided to use just one little strip of stickers and I measured that and cut it down and I did this on both of the original one and this one next I'm taking half of a four inch dually I've already cut it in half and I'm just going to insert it into the top I'm checking my original one to make sure. Yeah, just into the top of the pocket of the stuffed envelope, the very top. I'm just going to apply glue right along the edge. You don't want a whole lot, you just want that cut edge to attach down into the pocket. And then I'm going to carefully open up the pocket and attach this down into onto that pink section there. So I'm going to press that down I just wanted a bit of the lace uh, dually sticking up out of the top of the pocket. Again, I've already pre-made my paper clips by just gluing one of the flowers onto a large office paper clip and then punching a small circle out of paper and gluing that to the back of it to secure it down. So just tuck that into one of your pockets and then I realized that where I punched my thumb notches I didn't ink the cut edges of the paper so I'm just pulling those out a little bit and gently inking each of those with my distress marker pen. Okay, so now I'm ready to add some more decorations onto the front of my stuffed envelope. So I have this real pretty flower with the pearl. These are 49 and market flowers. They are real sparkly. They have glitter on them. And I really like how they look and the colors just are perfect for this paper collection. And I'm going to take two more, another doily, and cut it in half. So these all kind of stick together if you buy them in the package and you have to make sure you're just pulling one apart. But anyway, I'm cutting this one in half again. And I'm going to fold and glue these down to the left bottom corner of the last pocket on the very end, at the very bottom of this stuffed envelope. I did the same thing on the original, so I kind of fold it so it's kind of like a triangle shape or a cone shape. And I just put glue on the, the bottom tip and glue that in there, the first one. And then I like to kind of scrunch up my flowers to kind of make the petals go up. And I'm applying the same glue, my Art Glitter Designer Glue, to the back of this flower. It, it dries really well. I have used other glues on my flowers in past tutorials, but I'm finding out that this glue just works for everything. So I'm going to glue that down on top of that doily. And next I'm going to show you how to, I make a loose or floppy bow. To make my floppy bows for my projects, I use two of my fingers on my left hand and I just wrap it in and out, as you see I'm doing here. Then I poke the tail in between my fingers, bring it around the front, and then just tuck it in underneath and then start pulling back and forth. 
does get off the camera a little bit there. Now this is not a, anything that I learned by just myself. I did watch tutorials on how to do this. It takes a bit of watching. You can find these tutorials on YouTube and you can re-watch them to learn how and practice how to make these. I find it's easier to do this with the Hug Snug ribbon and I like to tie an extra knot and then once it's tied and I slip it off my finger I then just separate all the loops. Now you can also do this on if you have a ribbon template or I uh, can't remember what they're called but I know that you can buy several different bow makers that you can make different size little ribbons. My bows tend to be all about the same size for my paper collection of projects so I just do it on my hand. It's, I always have it with me and it's handy and once you've done it several times it becomes second nature. So I'm going to lift up my flower just a little bit here and I'm going to add some more glue and then I'm going to glue my bow down into it. Now you'll notice that I don't glue things just flat like put the flower and then the bow beside it. I try to incorporate them in together like put them together. I want the bow to be under the flower peeking out just like I want the doily to be just under it peeking out. You don't need to see everything in its entirety. You need to make things kind of go together like they they were done that way naturally. So I've taken another, the other half of the little doily and I've also folded it into a cone shape and I'm going to lift up that bow and I'm going to glue this one in on top of the other, kind of offset just a little bit. I want it to have some depth to it so I want it to look be more layers than just the one. So you do see just a bit of that under there. You've got your bow and you've got your flower. But we'll be adding some more things later and we'll uh, I'll show you that later. So right now I'm going to work on the regular size tag and at this point I had not received the new Graphic 45 tag dies yet and I'll be showing those in a little bit in this video. So for this tag I just cut the paper to fit below where the grommet is where the rounded corners are and I've rounded them with my corner chomper and I'm coloring the edges of the pattern paper. So I'm going to be gluing these down and I'm not totally covering up this tag. So this is one of the ways to do it if you don't have the new dies. The new dies are fabulous. I'm going to plug it in right here that you're going to want to get those because I got all three sets and they are wonderful. I'm going to be using the large set uh, in this video. So I'm just adding my pa uh, glue to the back of the paper and I decided to go with the green stripe to give it a still match the pattern paper that I used but give it a contrast with some green. So I'm just going to burnish that down. Make sure I have no bubbles. And then I take the hugs hug snug ribbon again. And I forgot to tell you earlier, when I make the bow on my fingers, I usually start out with uh, just under a yard of uh, material, I mean ribbon, depending on how many loops I want. You can do it with 18 inches to about 34 inches. It just depends. Sometimes you have excess. It's better to have more than not enough in making your bow. So I fed this through. I fold it in half and th th thread it through the grommet hole and then I'm going to take a bit of that really soft white lace and I'm just going to lay it around the ribbon tails and I'm going to tie a knot. So this is how I secure some of my ribbons on the tags. It's just a different way. You could tie a bow. I like to just tie knots and then trim the ends of my lace and the ends of my ribbon. So I'm doing that off uh, camera a bit because uh, I have to pull it up closer to myself to see it. So if, if I move my head down to see it closer you'd see the top of my head and you wouldn't see what I was doing anyway. So I just try to quickly bring it up close to me and then uh, trim it. If that bothers you I'm sorry. This is a really simple step. I mean most crafters know how to trim the ends of their ribbons so it's to me I don't think it's critical that it be totally in the video. So after I've done that, I take a smaller flower from my 49 and Market set that I'm using and I put some more glue on it and I'm just going to glue a little flower. It has a leaf already attached to it to the upper part of that tag offset to the right side. And this will slip down into one of the pockets on the stuffed envelope. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make a straw out of 
the same paper the, from the collection so that it matches everything in your project. Uh, you need a strip of paper that you want to use. I like to use the straw up side. Cut it one and a half inches wide by 12 inches long. You want to keep it 12 inch length. And I'm going to apply a line of glue on one side only about a quarter of an inch from the edge. It's just a thin line of glue. And I'm going to use a regular party straw that I have that I've used on other projects as my straw template. So you need either a sturdy straw like this or you need a very small like a quarter inch uh, wooden dowel uh, about 10 inches long. And I'm going to lay that on the corner that does not have glue. So you see right there on that corner you want to make sure that you're not gluing your straw template down onto your paper. So I'm going to start it and I'm just going to start rolling my pattern paper around it so that the paper catches into the glue. So you just had to fiddle with it to get it started. And now that it's started you're going to start just rolling and you should be able to keep sliding your straw back and forth in the paper. See how it's loose there? So now keep rolling it. Rolling. So you're rolling at this angle to create this straw. So I keep moving my straw down so that I have it to wrap around and roll around. So this is a real fun way to make a straw and it's not a straw that you can drink out of because it's not going to be sealed. Some people do seal them with wax uh, if that's what you want to do to uh, make it a real straw you could do that certainly but I'm just doing it for decorative purposes and then when I get to the very end I add a little bit of glue to that last little corner make sure it sticks down good wipe off any excess glue that you might have pull your straw out so you have a straw that you've made but it has pointed ends so you just need to cut those off straight on each end Now that I'm ready to attach a flower, you could attach a pinwheel like you've seen in a lot of the uh, stuffed envelope projects that you see on YouTube and Pinterest, but I'm going to flatten my straw and I'm just going to glue another one of those pretty flowers from that 49 and Market set. So I'm going to add glue to my straw and I did flatten it down on one end and I'm just going to glue the flower to it. I did use a clip. Uh, I didn't want to sit and hold it, so I used a clip to help hold the flower on until it dried. Now I'm ready to add more decorative things and tags and such to my pockets. So you remember that one little mini policy envelope we made out of leftover uh, closure pieces? I found a cut apart out of the papers or out of the ephemera cards and glue that to the front of it and just slide that in. So you put that on the front opposite the little closures and you stick that in. So you've got a great place for a, a gift card perhaps or a note. And I'm just going to go through the different ephemera cards and they just perfect size. They slide right in like that. And they're also pretty and then you can also like fold them to give them a different look. I folded this particular one. I've got the one from the original. If you fold it in half, it's a postcard. So I'm going to burnish this. So I fold it in half so it says postcard on the front side. And then what the excess that sticks out, I fold it over like a little flap and burnish that. So you could put, you know, uh, some kind of closure if you wanted to, a paper clip or whatever. I'm just going to leave mine just folded and stick it back into the pocket put this one over here in the first one I made and then this one right here so it just slides down into that little pocket and then this next one I'm going to fold it I think in half so don't be afraid to, to fold your ephemera cards or your cut aparts in half this collection doesn't come with cut, cut aparts on the paper on the in the paper collection so you do need to use your uh, ephemera and journaling cards that you can buy in a separate package. So just fold them up. Don't be afraid to fold them up to get the different directions and tuck all these into your little pockets. Decorate it the way you want. And now that my flower straw is dry, I'm going to stick that in. You could put in a pretty pen if you wanted to. Some maybe memo pads. Maybe make your own memo pads. That would be cute.
I've decided to add some chipboard pieces from the chipboard uh, package that you can buy to match this collection and I have punched out several different small ones I'm just sanding the edges where once you punch it out you do have some little leftover tag where the punches where the cuts are so I'm just sanding that I use a sanding block a foam sanding block that I purchase at Harbor Freight which is a hardware type store that has discount prices uh, on cheaper product and uh, these are very inexpensive you get a pretty good sized bag of them so you can use one and once you've used all the grittiness off of it you just toss it and get another one it's very economical and so this is what I use as my sanding tool so I'm just sanding each of these before I decide to glue where I want to glue them on I'm going to glue them all onto the bottom right of the front of the pocket of this uh, stuffed envelope so though these are two similar stuffed envelopes they are going to be a little bit different with their chipboard pieces because I only have one package of the chipboard pieces you want to utilize the whole set and so it's okay if they are not matchy matchy that they're a little bit different with what you uh, some of your smaller ephemera or decorative pieces that you glue on Okay, so now that I have them sanded pretty good, all of them, I'm going to go ahead and kind of place it down and then quickly decide and glue them down. I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time thinking about where to put them. I'm just going to get the glue on them and with the glue you can move them just a little bit. You don't want to move them too much because it will tear your paper. So I'm gluing this bigger one here and because it is a tag with a hole in the top, I am going to go ahead and probably glue one of these small pieces on top of it. So I've got these little square with the pretty flower on it from the chipboard set. So I'm gluing a chipboard onto a chipboard to kind of give us some dimension there and also to cover up that hole. You could put a brad in it if you wanted to. I just kind of like to use these sometimes. It, I just like the looks of it and uh, it works perfect like that. So glue that one down. I'm going to let that dry. So you see that's how that one looks. And then the other one's going to have a smaller tag because it was a two of the one that I used on the one on the left. So this is a smaller tag, but it is the same principle. It does have a tag hole, and I want to cover that up. So I'm going to glue this one down on the right side of this tag. And even though it's smaller, it still has that uh, look to it that layered up and so I'm going to glue another little square. It's a different flower and it's going to glue down on that one. And you'll notice that I put these at an angle, not square straight on. Um, it just gives it some a different look to kind of like pull it all together. It's not just placed there. It's, it's uh, Maybe it fell that way and that's the way it landed. So that's how that looks. So now I'm going to look into the uh, pack of tags and pockets and I'm going to select what I want to use on the back side. So I've turned my tags over and again you pick these out punch out what you want to use. They will be different. I'm using just one package of the tags and pockets for these two identical, I put that in quotation marks, identical uh, stuffed envelopes but uh, they will be a little bit different but they're still both going to be beautiful so I'm just punching out what I need and again you may have some little tag bits on the sides of them and if so you'll just need to sand those. So I've chosen a different little envelope for each of the stuffed envelopes and I'm just folding the tabs down and I'm going to glue this down onto the uh, back pocket on the back side of my project. So first I'm gluing the tags together, the little tabs I should say, and then I'm going to glue this down. So this is going to leave you like another little pocket where you can add some of the smaller tags that come in that uh, tags and pocket set. So I'm going to glue this down and I'm going to glue the other one down and make it into a pocket also. If it doesn't have the little um, tabs for you to glue then you can just glue the left and right side and across the bottom and so I've inserted some little tags that I punched out of the the set and right now this project I would have considered it done 
but then I decided I needed a long tag in the upper part of the stuffed envelope so I am cutting a two inch strip and I think these measure about eight inches you'll need to measure to see how far it goes in and I have a stamping up tab punch that I am using it's called a tag topper punch that I got earlier this year and that punches a two inch strip of paper it turns it into a really long tag and then I rounded the two bottom corners and these will just slide right in to the top part of your envelope with the, the uh, dually sticking out the top. So I, I like how that added to it. And you can add lots of different things. You can make lots of different tags out of some of your scraps of paper to insert into your stuffed envelope. And then so I considered it was done, but yet wait, I needed to add some lace. So I am just folding in half I'm really running low on this lace, so I folded it in half and then I decided no, I'll just thread it in and tie it in a knot. So I'm adding a bit of the lace to this tag that I just made with the stamping up uh, punch. And then you want to trim the ends. And then I decided well it also needed some ribbon, so I cut some of the green ribbon. And I'm going to do the same thing, but this is in reverse. I've I'm tying the ribbon around the lace rather than the other way like I did earlier. So I'm just tying a knot. These are a little harder to do because it's a little bit shorter. So I just need to hold those two pieces of the lace together and then wrap that ribbon around it and then tie it in a knot. and then go ahead and trim the ends. And then in the mail I got my three Graphic 45 new dies. These are the tag dies. These are wonderful. This one I'm showing you right now has the clock die with the regular tag die and the other one had gears for the ATC uh, the ATC is on this one for the other uh, regular tag but I'm going to use the die for the long one so I pulled out my long plates you do need a long plate set and the, the acrylic plate I'm going to lay that down and then I'm going to lay down the piece of paper that I want to put on my big tag. I'm going to use, make a long, uh, large tag out of the Graphic 45 tags that you can to get that are already pre-made with the grommets. So you just lay this down and position it where you want it on the paper. And because I want to see where I am cutting, what words I'm getting on the paper, I did cut these out one at a time. It's possible that you can cut two at a time out of the pattern paper, but I'm just going to run one through at a time on my machine. I have a big shot on another counter so you won't see me actually cutting this but this is how I made this sandwich with the plates and the die and then I'm going to take it over to my cutter and run that through. And I'm going to make cut two of those. So now I have my paper cut so you pull it out and you'll notice that the hole for the grommet is cut out, punched out for you. It's, it's absolutely wonderful it's going to fit perfectly over this Graphic 45 large black tag. So I have two of these ready to go. And I took my pen and of course inked the edges of the paper where it was cut out. Now I'm adding glue to the back side of the printed paper that I punched out with a die. So I'm just applying around all the edges around the hole opening at the top and then uh, a layer of it in the center. And then I'm going to just line this up. Make sure you, if you're doing the front side of your tag that you're putting it on the finished side of the grommet. You'll notice that there's a back and a front side on the tag. So this is the front side. I'm using the green. And I love how 
the uh, punched out tag or the tag cut with a die leaves a, a border of the base of the tag where you can see it. So it's perfectly cut to fit on this tag. Now I'm taking my bone folder and I'm just going to go around the edge of the grommet to make sure it sticks down good and I'm burnishing the paper down so that the glue spreads out evenly and doesn't leave any lines or warps or anything. So just burnish that out and this is how the tag looks once you've covered it with the paper cut out with the die. And for this large tag I'm using a bit of the pink Hug Snug Seam Binding Ribbon to uh, tie a ribbon onto the top of the through the grommet. I've uh, fed it through and looped it and so I'm trimming the ends off of that. And let me move some of my flower pieces aside. I'm going to show you in a minute of the how to make the flowers with the die cuts from the same set from Graphic 45, the same die cut set. So with the large you do get the flowers. So here there are the flowers. Uh, these all come on this set with the large die for the large tag. And I'm putting the ones that I used back on to show you what all comes on that. So this is a really nice set to get because you're just going to love being able to pattern your tags so easily and then make flowers for your projects. So I have punched out some out of the patterned paper and I have a little foam piece that comes from my flower making set. And I'm just laying the bigger ones down. I place them face down onto the foam and then I take my stylus tool and I'm just going around each petal in circular motion to get start getting the shape of the flower on the back side. So in each petal I'm doing a circle circle as you see here. And then I will turn it over. See it gives it that cupped look, but turn it over on the front side and then do the same thing on just the center. This will make your flower uh, center go down and your petals are cupping up and over. And if you need to, just do a little bit more until you get it to where it, it looks. And I'm going to do several layers of this and then I will glue them together. So I'm going to work on this one. You see this is just a piece of foam. I've even used a foam uh, computer mouse pad uh, to make flowers. So that works too. You just need a, sur a soft surface so that you can easily use your stylus to get the shapes. So now I'm taking a bit of my glue and I'm just putting it to the center of the first layer on the right side on the top side and then I'm staggering the petals of the next layer and just going to press down with my stylus so that it uh, keeps its shape and attaches to the glue. And you can do as many layers as you want for your flowers. I was just checking the petals up close. So see how they have that curve and starting to look like flowers. Now I have the small ones that I cut out with the die cut and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to circle motion on the back side of the petals and then I will turn it over and get the center indent. Now I'm going to put glue on the larger set that I was making and I'm going to attach one of the small layers in there. And again use my stylus to hold it in and make sure it attaches and, and keep the shape. And then another bit of glue and then the final layer and also stagger the petals on this one. They 
always want to turn a little bit so I have to move them back to where I want them and then you press down in there and I'm making sure my petals are like separated I don't want them stuck together anywhere just lift up a little bit to work with them okay so once they dry you're ready to add something in the center and I am going to use glue you can also use glossy accent it works really well and I have these small Prima gold prills that I'm going to put into the center. I'm just going to put a clump of them in the center. I've got a little sticky note that I'm folding in half to uh, catch the loose ones. So I'm going to put these down. And I like to use a paintbrush to keep them all in one place. Make sure you don't dip your paintbrush though into the glue. I'm just collecting the prills onto the brush and then tapping them down uh, into the glue. I'm using the brush to kind of hold them all together because they're, they're real small and they're hard to get in to where you want them. So then you uh, tap them off and then I poured the excess back onto the center of the flower and I'm going to add, if I need it, just a few more drops of glue and a few more prills to fill it in. So you just keep working with it until it looks the way you want it and then you'll set it aside and let it dry. I then glued my paper flowers into areas on the front of my envelope and to the back side also. And then as a final touch I decided I needed to add a little bit of the lace around the pink ribbon on the large tag so I was getting low on lace so I had to be uh, extra frugal with this but I was able to tie it onto both of the tags and then I also took some of the pink Hug Snug ribbon and tied a bow around the straw just below the flower to kind of finish this all off. So my project is finished. I want to thank you so much for watching. This is my last official tutorial as a Graphic 45 brand ambassador. I've so enjoyed my two years with them. I want to thank Graphic 45 and I want to thank all of you for watching my videos and leaving your comments on the Graphic 45 blog. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.